why this is important. You know, like, why even bother, right? Because for years, I was not super comfortable, but I was really not prioritizing stopping chasing. They're now scratching on one of the hardest things I had as a career, as a person. I work with these high performers that say that same exact thing when I talk to them at first. They don't know why it's important to deal with their stress when they're managing it very well. I call them a hot mess. They're frightened hot mess. They can make hot mess work because they understand the ins and outs and their payout. Yeah. And I bring this analogy to them. The waiting to have <laughs> something fall off your body before you have to take That's the legitimate person I work with, right? They don't yeah. call, they don't do something until they literally can't deal with right. their life anymore. Hey friends, welcome to Right Off Track, your favorite entrepreneurial resource where we dive into the mindset, strategy, and purpose of entrepreneurs around the world who are sharing their real stories and insights with you. I believe that we all have a unique purpose in life and that embracing our unique and special journey will help uncover that. If this helps you on your journey, I so welcome your support as we grow and improve this channel. Join us, subscribe. I promise you I'm fully dedicated to making this work better every step of the way. So share your feedback, subscribe, share with a friend, and let's go on this adventure together right off track. Enjoy this episode. Going off track is taking a chance on yourself. Following your poles of curiosity. It's making your own decisions. The most wonderful adventure. Hey friends, I'm your host, Anya Smith. Today, we're unlocking the secret of transforming health and performance with Patrick LaRouge. Get ready for some eye-opening insights from a man who's redefining holistic healing. Welcome, Patrick. I'm so excited to have you here. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Oh, I hope they're all Anya, doing great. how are great. you doing is the bigger question. <laughs> I'm doing really well. I'm really diving into my own exploration as an entrepreneur. And I'm finding, I'm sure to no surprise, is that it's really inner journey. And to a favorite topic of ours, it's not just, you know, your your mind, right? It's a holistic thing about how are you feeling? You know, how is your body feeling? What is my energy level? All that aligns. And so that's a little bit about me. But Patrick, let's talk about you. What got you on this path of exploring this holistic approach? So one of the things that I, I love talking about is what got me here because that's what everyone attaches to. But before I even get into that, I want everyone to think about we're already on this journey. We've already done this and we know what's happening. So like you said, it's all about what's happening inside your mind, what's happening inside your body. I want everyone just to feel your heart real quick. Touch your heart, your physical heart. Touch your, put your hand on your heart and tell me if you instantly start to feel your heart. And if there's a slight glitch that's happening there, that means you're not in your body. Mm -hmm. And it took me a very long time in my career. Do you feel your heart right? Did you feel your heart right away, Anya? It took a moment. It took a moment. Yeah, it's fair. Yeah. Uh, did you feel it right away? Is that going to be the, the, the kicker? Like once you feel I, it, I, I you think sit it there. It took me a moment. It took me a moment. So the longer that you'd be surprised, mm -hmm. some people can't get it. And yeah. that's what I learned as I was going through, because you can do all the things, all yeah. the techniques in the world, and you will be doing the work, but you're yeah. not really doing the work. And that's because you're separated yeah. your mind and your body and yeah. connecting the two. And yeah. that's where my, where my career started to really take off. Once I realized I learned all sorts of techniques in my 24 years, mm -hmm. but when it really did matter is what, when it really did work, it's mm -hmm. when I placed it all together. So gotcha. I started to heal my, my, my carpals. I started healing my eyes. I started doing all these massive transformations with these people. And the common denominator is when I got them to actually slow down and calm down, not mm -hmm. just, oh, I'm relaxed. It's like <laughs> being able to look internal and say, right. this is my issue. This is my outcome. And this is how I'm showing up and right. actually being okay with that. Yeah. That's how I started. So every time I fix, fix something big, Something that people yeah. say you can't do, like healing dislocated carpals where it no longer hurts yeah. anymore. Fixing right. all my body pains, my yeah. eyes, right? Every time I get a, an internal issue inside myself, whether it being candida, gut issues, whether it being um, losing fat, losing a yeah. lot of weight, going right. through that fluctuation of life, having kids and blowing up, and then yeah. going back down, losing that really, really quickly, <laughs> right. all comes with the, the fact that I was present. And the only reason why I'm able to say that is because every single time I've done it or seen it happen, it's because I synced up my mind and my body. And then gotcha. you can trace that with any high performer out there. You yeah. can see that moment is when, when the shift happens is when they actually connect their mind and their body. Gotcha. And that's and what I've noticed. And that, that's what yeah. got me here. 
Absolutely. Patrick, how did you come to that being the path? Because as you know, there's so much noise about what you should be doing, especially when we talk about the physical side, like, you know, I should be working out and doing all that and supplements and eating and nutrition, like everything in the world. What led you to that sense of inner intuition as being the healing path? Oh, now this is a fun question. Um, so what I heard you say was, how did I get onto this journey on this path being the right path for me? Yes. Right. I didn't do what normally people did is chase the money. I actually chased my heart. Mm -hmm. And what felt good in my heart is what made it all happen for me. And as I started to, this is starting way back in high school, I started to realize I had a problem with authority. I couldn't take answers, which then hardwired me to be an entrepreneur. Right. I couldn't take any direction for anyone. I had to make it up my own way. But then I had a series of events that happened that, seemed hard, but it was the easiest pathway. It was my flow. Mm -hmm. So because I was so angry, let's say as an angry teenager and don't tell me what to mm -hmm. do, the easiest direction was, was to combat someone saying, I can't do something. And at that point it was a massage therapist, um, a <laughs> dean at a, a, my massage school saying I would never be a good massage therapist. Oh. So my flow of easiest direction was to combat somebody mm -hmm. and say, oh, I can do it. <laughs> And that's what I want to share with everybody. It's not what the right thing to do, what makes yeah. the most money, what makes it set, what makes you flow the easiest. So mm. whatever comes easy out of you is mm. what you need to learn how to do and lean mm. towards it. Not necessarily the thinking right thing to do, but yeah. what makes it really easy for you to do. And this is your state. What yeah. makes you happiest while yeah. doing it. Now, don't yeah. get me wrong. You also have to make money doing it. But yeah. once you realize you can make money with the thing that you love, that's when you have the best of both worlds in that way. And that also syncs up with how you heal, how you get anything that a manifestation is when you sync both of those up. That's how that happens. And that's what I've been teaching people how to do. Absolutely. And Patrick, how did you turn that? How do you have that reflection that this seemingly, you know, challenging thing, you know, traditional viewpoint where some people, well, that's, you know, that's a negative side of it. And you said like, that's actually a strength that's guided me in the right direction. Like, were there people in your life who gave you that support or did you have other examples? It's like, you know, actually this is my strength and I should follow that energy. All right. So let me see what I heard you saying. Who, who helped me get that recollection? Yeah. Is that the yeah, question? Or, or, yeah. Or, or how do you get, maybe it, it could be who, it could be how, it could be like just, you know, that inner just yeah. direction. Now that's what it was. Hindsight's twenty twenty, right? Yes. You don't learn this crap unless you look back. And right. so many people are so forward driven. That it's like, I don't want to look back. And then you run and run and run. You never mm -hmm. learn the things that's going to make things easier. So the easy, the easy answer is as I wanted to learn something, a teacher was there to teach me, right. but you never see the teacher there teaching you, especially the big things, unless you turn around after the fact and realize mm -hmm. this is how far I made it. Right. And this is what I learned. So many people judge their progress based off of how far they're going and mm -hmm. how, how they're going, how close they are to their goal, right? I want everyone to start shifting that. And that's starting to become more and more prevalent now as people mm -hmm. looking back and judging their progress was um, once I, where I was, once upon a time I was here and now I'm here. Look how much more progress I am to getting over to my goal. Mm -hmm. And the more chunks and blocks you have, the better you are. So to answer your question, it came internal but it only came internal after I turned around and said, what did I learn from this chapter of my life? Right. And then I took what I learned there and started applying it to the next place. So now I take that in the ability to learn now with the skills I learned over there and placed it into this podcast interview, for instance. So I can actually be here and speak with you and be excited, <laughs> but not overthinking and underthinking. I'm just here with you because right. I've learned how to calm myself down. Absolutely. And the way I do that is in the very beginning, uh, I made you feel your heart and your heartbeat and the, that texture, that pace, the more you can mm -hmm. be detailed with it, the more you're going to be inside your body. So if mm -hmm. you were to feel your heart now, if I spiked your nervous system, I said anything wrong or you, mm -hmm. it's supposed to be a certain way, you're going to start getting heady. You're going to get outside of your body. You won't feel your heart. So if you felt mm -hmm. your heart, if you feel your heart again, you're going to feel like, am I getting you in your body or out? Now, hopefully mm -hmm. everybody's doing it with you so you can see oh, at different times, you're going to be present or not present. Yeah. And that's the key is learning how to do that. Does that make sense? Which then gives you the ability yeah. to look backwards to learn that. Yeah. If that answers your question. Yeah, no, this is great. You know, recently I had this reflection. Yeah. I've always struggled with this concept, like, you know, be present. Because I feel like you just all you have to do is breathe and be present. So I'm like, okay, that sounds fantastic. 
but I've tried, you know, meditating and it just didn't stick. Like I would sit and I would be like, this is nice. But then anytime something stressful would happen in my life, that practice would like go out the window. And recently I had this reflection that really like that, well, part of it is my own inner journey where I'm really trusting the universe and the connection um, there. But it's just like that, A, I don't have full control of the universe. You know, like I can't control tsunamis and whatnot. So like part of it is like tr having that trust in something higher than you that's guiding you. And that in a way gives me this trust that if I am at mo and if I am in the moment as best as possible, like that really helps me connect to my intuition better. That helps me live a better life. It helps me again, have a better connection with the thing that is guiding me in the most loving and wise way, which is my own, like, oh, my own goals can be like my own, but they're probably not the best for me overall, right? There's a higher wisdom in there that's guiding me in a wiser way. And so I had this really different perspective on why I should be in the moment, not just because like, it's nice and calming, everybody says so, because that's really, but so it became, it's really the best thing for me and my future quote unquote goals, which are wiser than me and not just my own head goals. Um, so that was something recent. And it just became like this thing that I really struggled to do and be able to reframe it now and actually want to be in the moment in like the most boring moment in the most frustrating moment in the most whatever. Ah. But I having that desire to be here is so vivid because like that's when I can be intuitive. That's because I really sense my energy. That's when I can really, really be alive. And that's been something recent that's really changed in me. Well, that's very important for everyone to hear. But what I heard is two different thoughts or statements yeah. that yeah. I wanted to ask you a question on. Sure. Go One for you it. said, How do you become present? And a yeah. lot of people ask me this question all the time. And it's not so much of how, because yeah. it's very simple. So you got to just be here. <laughs> it's yeah. more about you have to understand are you, based off of your past life experiences, yeah. more mentally driven or physically driven? Hmm. Right. So and then once you understand those two components to yeah. be present, you have to have both of those humming at the same frequency or the same length, so where one's not overtaking the other yeah. in that way. So yeah. most people are head driven, especially uh, us high performers. We're thinking ahead. We're seeing yeah. all the problems we're seeing yeah. around corners. We're doing all these different things, which is external, yeah. which means yeah. they're in their head. So yeah. my go to for, for everyone is can you feel your heart, which then brings you back into your body. Yeah. That is how you get into a present state is feel a sensation inside your body, whether yeah. it is feeling your hand being present and feeling your hand, which you can do at any moment. Yeah. The big issue that I see everyone have is when do you do it? And like what you said, when shit hits the fan, yeah. do you stop and do it? Yeah. I, I, that I is the issue. With, yeah, I agree with that. I think, but to me, like it was really like the matter of why this is important. You know, like, why even bother, right? Because for years, I was very, you know, it was not super comfortable, but I was really not prioritizing stopping chasing, mm. right? Like, it was something I didn't like, but I it wasn't prioritizing enough to change it. And so, like, I think to me, it's also like, what's going to what's gonna really push you off the ledge? Like, this is important to me to change it enough. And I don't think it's going to be the white and fluffy, like, just slow down. <laughs> I think it's going to be really, like, this is, this is really the best life is going to happen to me when I do this, is my uh, internal prioritization that's changed. So you're, you're now scratching on one of my, um, one of the hardest things I have as a career, as a person. Mm -hmm. I work with these high performers that say that same exact thing when I talk to them at first. Yeah. They don't know why it's important to deal with their stress when yeah. they're managing it very well. Yeah. They're functioning. I call them a hot mess. They're functioning hot <laughs> mess. They can make the hot mess work because they understand the ins and outs of their chaos. Yeah. And then I bring this analogy to them because this is the hardest part is to teach somebody that's doing something pseudo okay, but it's not falling apart. You're waiting yeah. for <laughs> you to have something fall off your body before you have to take it. That's the legitimate person I work with, right? They don't yeah. call or don't do something until they literally can't deal with right. their life anymore. Right. And then I bring them to a question. I was like, all right, you can breathe right now. Yeah. Everybody know, I want you to think about this. The concept of breath, taking mm -hmm. in air, it's crucial. You can't live three minutes without it or yeah. depending on if you practice it, 10 minutes, yeah. whatever the case may be. Put yourself in a puddle, you're done. A puddle and you're done because right. you can't breathe. Right. But yet everybody knows they need to work on their breath work. Yeah. Everybody knows you're not supposed to be breathing in your chest, but we breathe in our chest, in our belly. Yeah. I was like, all right, so you know yeah. for a fact that you're having an issue not breathing well. Mm -hmm. You're saying, yeah, so I should work on that. And that's the small picture. 
what you have to think for everything about being present, mind, body connected, being inside your body and doing more things from that place of connectiveness, you have to blow that up into a big picture of, by the way, the, the reason why you're not breathing is because of all the fear, all the tra- trauma that you had, all the things. But because you're not taking care of this now, you don't realize that it's taking years off your life. Mm-hmm. So if you were to change that breath and start learning how to breathe deeply and took that seriously, you're doing it fine now, but you're doing it, but it's taking away years off your life. What happens if you yeah. change that? Get that breath to work better. So you're taking in more air. More air yeah. gives you more oxygen, nourishes your body. You start tacking on years to your life. Mm-hmm. Once a person hears that, they're like, oh, that, that is true. I'm not taking that serious. And the reason why is because you have a habit loop of you wait until you <laughs> can't breathe and it starts getting in your way of your normal life to take action. We have to get you to realize you're being preventative and proactive to now change the trajectory of your life your longevity of your life. And that happens also with a hurt shoulder, the fact that you can't move, the fact that you can't stand within this confident posture. All those small things add up to years to your life. That's when you start connecting the dots to those, and that's what I have to do before I even work with somebody. Or else they'll say, I just want you to fix this small little problem and keep me in this small little bubble when it's so much bigger. And then you can be so much more productive as well as live life happily. Like get everything that you want. You'll thrive in life all by changing your breath and locking that in. Once you shift that, then it's easy. But that is literally the challenging thing that I have to work with every high performer is showing them their small little thing that they're not focused on. That would blow things up. I was curious, what are maybe some, you mentioned breath, but are there some common like problem areas people come with you with, come to you with that you want to share like some things that you go through through your practice to help them? Like maybe a couple of top themes that people come to you for and how do you go about solving that? Now are you ask me things that I know is a problem that they don't know or things that they actually come in like, oh, I have this problem. Let's do it from their lens, then how you see it and then maybe solution. So that's very, very simple. I know for a fact every human body is the same, and I call it the, um, the human body chronicles, the human body issue. It's the common core issue with every human body. And it's going to be the same for every human body. So if I can just solve that, I can solve everything else. That is my lens that I'm, I'm looking at because everyone has the same organ placement, and that's where the root of, that's the root of your, everyone's issue. Because we have something inside that's doing something, and then we flatten out the world. So our environment's different. Now that you understand that, now everybody says, my neck hurts? I always have this stick neck, and I, I don't sl- sleep right. I have a stiff neck. My back <laughs> hurts, and my hips don't move. I need more range of motion. And or my feet and calves feel really, really tight, but they mm-hmm. don't do anything about it. Mm-hmm. Which then, something catastrophic happens where they either blow a knee or blow a shoulder, and that's mm-hmm. what normally happens. So all five of those joint areas is where people say, this is what I need help with. Mm-hmm. And most of the time, it's just like, I don't move very well. And I, I ask them about these areas, like, oh, yeah, that doesn't work. And it hasn't worked for years very well. And that's that's the the key things that need to happen. And so that's physical, because everybody physical points. on the physical. Yeah. So mm-hmm. on the emotional side, the psycho-emotional, because that's where everything, like, that's where my whole practice is going towards is to bring the awareness to your psychosomatic world, which things that's happening inside your head is dictating your body and your body is dictating your mind. Mm -hmm. So it's not one trumps the other. They both sync up and they both have the communication to one another. Mm -hmm. And and that's happening all over the world. Like they, they're starting to come along about there's more neural pathways inside your gut that goes to your brain than your brain that goes onto your body. It's, it's bananas how much your body can communicate. Now the body's getting the the attention it needs, that it, it actually works with the brain, not yeah. brain over body. And that's something okay. that's happening. So the um, people come to me on those physical things. And then the biggest thing is I can't quiet my mind or I'm scared if I quiet my mind, I'll stop my advantage. They're afraid to turn off their mind. So it's like, I can't mm-hmm. stop my mind, but I'm also afraid to turn off my mind. Those are the common mm-hmm. things that I see often. And then mm-hmm. the, the I would say the one that's coming up quickly now that people are starting to get more in touch with their body is they don't know how to control their emotions. Those, yeah. those seven things I see often. Yeah. Now, it changes with each person in that way, but I guarantee you everyone that I talk to has one of those things or 
all of those things playing a role in their life right now that they're ignoring. Yeah, it's interesting. I see sometimes our body, it's like, it's like we're, our body is our car, right? Like we're driving it and we love our car, but we can't take it for granted. Like it's working and we go everywhere we want and it's working and that's fine until there's like an oil change, until something mm-hmm. happens where something needs to get fixed and you're like, oh, okay, I guess this actually needs my attention. So like when it's working fine, we are easily for gran- taking it for granted. We're not even thinking about how it really works. We're just like, okay, it's fine. <laughs> so then- that, that's, that's the big problem that I'm working yeah. with. It's high performance. Yeah. We just keep on going, keep on going. One, because we detach from our mind or our body and yeah. we just keep on pushing. And or we see the white writing on the wall. Yeah. And because it's not blowing up catastrophically, we don't do anything about it. Okay. And I tell everybody about this. Like, you never want to buy a, me- a car from a mechanic because the mechanic takes care of everybody else's car and not his own. Right. That's with everything. Yeah. You talk to a personal trainer, or a physical therapist, they're more likely to have issues that they know how to fix, but they don't because they're always taking care of somebody else. And that is the high performer, the mom, a high performer or a business owner. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All three. So you have like three chops against you on that. But that's yeah. why it's so easy for us to do it. And I don't want to blame like, oh, you <laughs> should be doing more and should, should have, could have, would have. Don't yeah. play a role in here because you right. have a life that you are now actively not taking charge of and taking responsibility of your car. And do you want your car, the only one that you have, to last for a long time? For instance, if you were to live to 110 years old, and that's, you know, let's let's play it safe now, right? 110 years old. Yeah. Do you want to live in a bed with a respirator and like, ah, or do you want to live an active life at 110? Absolutely. Yes, which one is it? Oh, and I hope everyone's active. doing this. Gonna listen. Definitely that. Definitely active. So the yeah. things that you're doing now, does that add up to 110 years old? Are you doing the best work that you could possibly do right yeah. now that's going to give you that 110 years old? And yeah. that's your answer. Yeah. And once you start making those small switches, then you're like, oh, let me start working on this car a little bit, just a little bit yeah. every single day. Yeah. And that's how you make that small little shift. Patrick, and I can imagine that even for me, like and other people listening, especially moms, it could be hard because you sense that, well, I'm giving to others and that's what I should be doing. I mean, like as a mom, I'm prioritizing my kids. I'm taking care of my husband. I'm taking care of the house. Like, so at the end of the day, how much energy do I have? And also recently for me, I realized like that I need to change that perspective, that it's not selfish to prioritize myself, that actually I need to sincerely reflect on this hierarchy and put myself above because that's like everybody should put themselves above. Like uh, there should be a priority and not just for like the sake of saying it, but actually like, how can do I recover? What do, what's me time look like? What do Mm -hmm. I want to do? Because we're not showing up. We think we're showing up best by taking care of others, but really we're not. I was just talking to my coach that other day, like, well, how are you showing up when you are giving them that you're all versus say you take that break and it feels selfish, but you just take an hour for yourself and then you show up. How do they see you? What energy do they sense? Like the difference between you being there, but being somebody who's lacking in the energy and how do they sense your energy then? Or you took a break, you felt maybe selfish, whatever you want to call it, but then you showed up for a different energy. What would they prefer? And I love that. So if you're listening, you think, oh, you know what? Like, wouldn't it feel good to, to do this for myself? It's like challenge that perception. If you have this, it's like, oh, but how can I do that for myself? Is it selfish? Like, no. You're showing up better for yourself and for the world and for everybody in the world who you interact by prioritizing yourself. So I hope that also aligns. 100%. I have, um, I work with a lot of moms, a lot of high performers, our own business owners that has um, employees. So I have it, I tell people this exact same thing in two different ways, but I go deeper. A lot of my work drives deep into the root causes. So I have the root cause of the body, organ placement, mind and body, so psychosomatic is based off your inner child and childhood development and your generational learning. So based off of that. So I bring people into moms, number one. I was like, all right, so you are the guide to your family, to your kids. Your kids learn by imprinting, especially from the ages zero and seven. They see something and it becomes real. The actions that you do now, not the words that you say, the actions that you show them now become their reality, whether you like it or not. Yeah. So by you not taking care of yourself and taking care of them all, all the time with yeah. nothing for you and they see you withering away, what are you exactly teaching them? Now, what's their first thought when you, when you hear that? Um, 
like th- th- that honestly it makes me sad like and i don't have a very logical answer to it but it's just like a sadness Perfect. yeah it's a big sadness it's like oh shoot and that's the feeling that, that have you back into your body now that is what's going to make you take action on changing that perspective yeah if you're a mom and you resonate well with that now all you have to do is say how can i what can i do yeah. that can now show my kids i'm taking care of myself but still loving them yeah for instance when my wife needs to work out it's like honey she needs to leave to work out so she can come back happier for you. Let's see how happy she comes back when she Aww. works out. Right? So now the kid is happy for to yeah. see her mom leave. Yeah. Take the business owner. Business owner, I was like, all right, so you have these employees. Do you want the employees for every single question they have to come to you because you have been answering the question to them? You see what's happening? No. Like, oh, no, 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 no. I want someone interdependent. I want someone yeah. to figure it out and do so. I was like, so why don't you start showing them that by giving them yeah. the, the type of level task that they can handle, but stretches them yeah, and then step back and wait for them to come with a problem and a solution. Yeah. And that's the only way that you can do that is by letting that go. And that's for the business owner, letting it go, which is equivalent to getting more me time. And for yeah. us, for us business owners, the more me time we have, the more we go play off in the thing that's going to make us bigger, which actually yeah. fills our tank. Yeah. So by us always answering the questions, we can't fill our tank on the business side. Yeah. And th- those are the two examples I give people to start realizing you need your me time. Yeah. You need so, to be present within yourself. I was actually thinking about like, you know, a one-on-one day, write a book. And I was thinking like the art of, of being slow in the fast world, right? Something like that just came to mind. It's it probably is. not going to be it, but there's so much there's such an overwhelming noise around going faster and doing more and seeing what somebody's doing on social media. Like, oh, why am I not doing that? And yet the more I'm doing the self-work, the more like, I really am enjoying slowing down because mm-hmm. here I'm like, oh, this is not working for me. Or like, hey, why am I listening to this noise? Or like that, that's just not possible for me to reflect and do um, when I'm always rushing and following again that speed, and then I'm like, well, what? Is, why do we even have all this f- speed? Like, why is society so obsessive doing things faster, faster, faster? And I look at that as direct relation. Like, there's not an overwhelming abundance of happiness, right? <laughs> like, the, the reason I got the speed is aligned to sense. Like, this is actually not working. It's not actually not serving, but it's something that's very easy to get behind because it it seems sound, right? That okay, speed more should be better more faster should be even, we live even in that better <laughs> we definitely live in that society of yeah. more more is better um like look at i i go back into the health world all the time and yeah. say look at the way that we're working out we're thinking yeah. bigger muscles harder more extreme is yeah. better but you're seeing those people get hurt more and more because they're doing something that's not aligned with how the human body works number one yeah the human body is not efficient when it's ginormous but yeah. we have this cultural thing that we have to have these chiseled pecs, these six pack abs and everything yeah. looking awesome. But there's also studies that's now, and I'm not a big, it's all about the studies thing. It's all about yeah. like, you have to remember the human body. For instance, women, women want yeah. this extremely thin look. And yeah. I have to remind them, your fat is what's going to give you health as a yeah. woman. Like you need that fat. So I'm not saying you can't have the six pack abs, but you don't want to go extremely low. And yeah. everyone's optimum performance is based off their body. It's not always under 10% body fat, especially for women. Oh my God. So it's not healthy in that way, but we have this stigma inside our head that we have to do it. So we have to do it as fast as humanly possible. And that's why people keep on going. And for business owners, it's because we're chasing that success. We're chasing that next thing. And that, that because it's external, we want to say, if I get to that, I'll be successful. I'll be happy. So we get to that and we realize that's not the case. So we chase down the next thing. And we have to get that even faster because we want it faster, more and more. It's yeah. the instant gratification loop that we have. We have to break that and start realizing you're happy now. Yeah. How do we and get once comfortable? once you realize you're happy now. How do we get comfortable with that? Like, how do we get comfortable being present? Any thoughts on that? Oh, now. Okay. <laughs> so how do we get comfortable being present is a fun question. Is because the first thing in anything is acknowledging where you are. Mm-hmm. So I have something called a GPS model, right? I teach people... In order, like, think any GPS, this is how I came up with it, it was so ridiculous, <laughs> is think about any GPS. Right. You need to know a couple things for that GPS to work absolutely great. You need yeah. to know where you're going, like, yeah. where you're going. And then you need to know where you are. Mm-hmm. When we think about our personal selves, we're always looking at where we're, where we're going, where we're going, rather than seeing where we are. 
And as soon as you look at where we are, then you can start making some real judgments on if you're happy where you are. So mm -hmm. what is the worst neighborhood in your, in your neighborhood, in your city? Worst part. Just think about it. Like Old Town. Like maybe closer to the Old Town. Old the Town. Yellow Bridge. Yeah. So let's say you're in Old Town. You're in the best car in the world. Right? Windows down. You have all of your jewelry on, all the money in the back of the car. They can see it. How safe do you feel? I mean, not, not less safe than other areas, let's say, relatively. So let's go to the worst area possible. Like, yeah. that is absolutely not good. Yes. I want you to think about that and then look at that and say, what would you do in that moment? you are like, I'll get the fuck out of there. Right? <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm realizing I'm cursed. I'll no, get out of there. It's explicit. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Like, I would get out of there. The only reason why you have that immediate reaction, because I got you back into your body, I got you present to answer that one question, right? Mm -hmm. I got you present to where you are. So many people generalize where they are now mm -hmm. that they never have any immediate action to, I don't like this. I don't mm -hmm. like this feeling. I don't like always rushing. I don't like mm -hmm. how I'm snippy at times. They never put themselves and look at where they truly are. They generalize where they are. I'm in this general area. <laughs> which then they have a general direction to get out of there to get to their goal. But if you get exactly yeah. pinpoint, like, how do you like that? What is something that makes you feel like that? And then you say, oh, this is really hard. And that's one of the reasons why people don't do that is because it is really hard to look at yourself and say, I really don't yeah. like that about myself. I might need to change that. And then yeah. you can get a different question, a different action step. Like, what can I do to make that action change? And now you have a direct action to now staying present and becoming back to this present state. Because now this is the ultimate thing. To get present, you have to be happy with who you are and where you are. Yeah. That is the ultimate answer right there. You have to be happy and present with who you are and where you are. And yeah. once you're there, then you can get comfortable with whatever's happening around you. Yeah. And that's yeah. that zone. That's that flow state too. Does that make yeah. sense? Absolutely. And when I hear happy, I also want to share, I mean, on, on my perspective, like happy doesn't mean like you're just like, oh, that's so good. You're just like, like content sounds always like a, a, a negative thing, but like you are just more calm. Like you feel at peace, like a peace or happy is I think what we're going mm -hmm. like. And so, and I mentioned that because oftentimes you think like happiness has to be like this overwhelming sense, <laughs> right? Like another, like another extreme dipping point. And if you feel like, oh, I'm not there, then that things are not working. That's like, that's not what I hear you saying. I say, Happiness is a sense like just like I'm feeling good, I'm feeling content, I'm feeling at yep. peace, which is like some kind of extreme agitation, or even that over heightened sense of like happiness. Like those are both extremes. We want to try to get to a middle ground in the moment. Is that right? Yeah, one hundred percent. But I want to go a little bit deeper, if you don't mind. Okay. Of course. And say if you're able to feel still, mm. comfortably being still, no fidgeting, just sit here and just be like, oh look at this, I'm okay. I'm not doing anything. I don't need a phone, TV, electronic. I don't need to solve a problem, <laughs> answer a kid's question. I'm okay. Yeah. Yeah. So those times where people feel bored and we tell our yeah. kids, go outside and play because you feel bored. And now they're, start, they're starting to say, you should leave your kids being bored because that lets them be themselves. Yeah. Anya, when was the last time you were actually bored and you were okay with it? There goes your answer. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> there yeah. goes your answer. But I, I like I like the quiet pieces. So like I actually really enjoy just sitting in the stillness. So that to me doesn't feel like boredom. So in the sense like Ooh, I don't that's remember. actually yeah. you're, you're close yeah. then. Yeah. You're close. Yeah. If you can find yeah. more more moments like that, yeah. I'm gonna even say you probably already found your sweet spot. Yeah. Because you can stay in that in that place for a little while. So I wouldn't yeah. say that that analogy would work for you because yeah. The things that you're doing to be bored, I guarantee you, if you look back in the beginning, you'll be like, fuck, I don't know what to do. What am I supposed yeah. to do when you were doing the thing that works now? Is yeah. because you found that sweet spot of you linking your mind and body together and you don't yeah. have to do anything. But if you Absolutely. think back in the beginning, then you'll be like, oh, that bored feeling is here. I, don't, I, I need to do yeah. something. I feel bad. I should do something. Yes. Oh my gosh. A hundred percent. And what, what I do now when I hit that voice, like when I'm saying like, I'm going to sit down and just relax and meditate and be quiet. First, the ego comes and like, this is just BS. Like, this is all bullshit. Like, why are you even bothering? This is just a waste of time. Like, so your ego immediately goes on alert. Right. And then it's like, Hey, you have 700 million things to do right now that you should be thinking about. Right. Like that's the second thing. And then like what I've been recently doing is like, really? Like, 
how is that going to actually help me? Like, I, would just, I just come back to that inner voice, like, how is doing 1 million hundred things right now going to help me? How is that ever going to make and me happy? It isn't. So if, you, if you're in that head, if that voice is in that, like, how is that really serving me? Is it really making me happy right now? Or is that something that's going to make me feel like that's what I need to do to earn validation? That's what I need to do to feel significant because that's never enough. The thing about that voice is that it's never actually serving you. It's seemingly trying to protect you, but it's just never enough. And once you realize that, you're like, why, why am I even doing that? Like, it's just there to, as a protective mechanism, for sure. I, I don't look at it as a negative, but if you start questioning that, you're like, that may be not really true. And if that's not really true, like, why don't I focus on things that actually feels right for me versus just being in my head? You, you're one, like I wrote a whole article about it. If anyone's mm. looking for the article, it's that um, you're addicted to stress. Yeah. And there's there's yeah. different categories that I, I gave people through my years, like the busy body, and that's what we're talking about now. We always have mm. to be busy to do something because that you know calms us down, thinking that it's better. And it's the easiest way to describe that is we have nothing to do, and we're having a conversation, and the person is cleaning up. I see this a lot with moms. They're cleaning things, I'm like uh huh, uh huh, and they're cleaning, <laughs> wiping things. Like, I have to do it anyway, so I'm just going to do it while I'm talking with you. Oh, um, yeah. That's the, that's, the, that's the busy body, right? Yeah. They have to be busy in their body. Or the problem solver, they're always thinking of a problem, and if nothing's going on, something's wrong. So they have to be like, all right, so what's yeah. the problem here? They think yeah. about it that. So you're 100% right. Everything that you're doing, everything that you're saying has a, a correlation, and mm -hmm. we have to just get used to that experience in that world. But I got off on a tangent a little bit, so I'm going to come it. back. I love it. Please go where you want to, because I feel like we've touched on different areas, but I want to give you the space to really focus on anything in around your practice or any service that you really want to highlight. Oh, <laughs> okay. So around my practice, no pressure, like I already, no talked, pressure. Just... <laughs> I already talked about my journey, about how I came. I've been 24 years. I worked with pro athletes. I got flown out to places. I wrote a book, right? I did all the things, but what truly made me happy is once I started to implement what I, why I wrote the book. And I wrote the book in 2020. It's a simple path to getting everything done with energy to spare. Yay, bro! I love that. I love um, that. No, energy is like, that, that's, my, that's my sexy word right now. Like, talk energy to me. <laughs> all right. So energy, this is all right. So we're going to go down that rabbit hole. So energy is a byproduct of your body and your mind working together. When you have a lot of energy, it's because everything is in line and you're in alignment. Or as well as some people use energy in the um, the woo woo world, but they're one and the same, right? It's just like the breath, how well your energy flows, how well you heal. So inside the book, I talk about a bunch of different ways that you can identify it, and a bunch of different ways why you have energy failures and what you can do about it in that way. But mm -hmm. all of it comes back down to you getting back into a mind body connection by looking inward at yourself and actually looking at where I am and what I'm doing in that way. Um, bringing yourself back into an ability to turn your body, your gaze back at yourself and look at you are the problem as well as you are the solution. And it doesn't have to have a good or bad associated with it. It's just you are the problem and you are the solution. Mm -hmm. Because the more you learn this, the mind learns by making mistakes. Mistakes come as bad experiences. So every time you have a bad experience, there's a learning moment to have in there because you made a mistake, which means your brain is trying to correlate something. You didn't do something, AKA right, right? But that moment, looking back at yourself, now I'm taking the whole um, podcast and going back, is like the more you can look back and look and reflect on everything, you can see the AKA mistake that you believe is wrong, but it's not wrong, it's the learning. You can actually start to get back into your body and really focus. And that's some of the book, what the book is talking about in there. And that's what everyone needs to practice on so they can actually slow down and get back up. And to, and I'll let you talk in a second, I guess. Um, one of the things that I teach a lot that I want everyone to hear is think about driving your car and you're coming around a, a, a pretty steep bend. What do you have to do in order to not wreck? You have to slow down. And the more and more you learn to slow down, the more and more you could take better uh, corners safely, as well as halfway through the corner, because you can see around the bend, that's when you hit the gas and you come out even faster. So you're actually doing faster work by slowing down. 
And that's another example that I want everyone to really, really understand. Slowing down is not only important, but it's a necessity if you want to move fast. If you want to make more money, mm -hmm. look back and don't look at how I can make the next buck, but look how I can make the next hundred bucks. And I guarantee you, it's going to look different than what you're doing now. But the mm -hmm. only reason, only way you can do that is by calming yourself down, quieting your mind and allowing that to show itself. You don't create it. It shows up I'm like, oh, so sh those shower conversations. If I do this, for instance, how do you think about the podcast? Besides being annoyed at work and not doing that, you were just like, I don't like to work. I'm in the shower or uh, on the pooper or driving. Those are the three that happen all the time. It's like, oh, if I do it like this, that will happen. And it's always like that. And then it just, poof, things just open up, right? So it's a matter of getting to those quiet moments, slowing yourself down, which gives you the best ideas in the world. And that's how, how you get to your next level. And that's, mm -hmm. that's what my whole practice is about, is getting someone to the next level by optimizing their body, yeah. optimizing the psycho-emotional self, but also aligning with their spiritual, their spiritual world. And that's my three yeah. process, my three pillar process. I love it. It sounds like again, triangle is the strongest shape, right? And it sounds like, again, the triangle that you're creating in those three areas. I, I truly believe that when we're misaligned in one area, we feel it. Oftentimes, we're probably missing alignment in some of those areas. So I love how holistic it is. And the element you talked about, speed, right? One, I think it's important to slow down for everybody. But the other thing I think is really true is realizing that our need to slow down is going to be different from another person's need. So if like, for example, my husband, he can, he has a different energy than I do. He can work a lot differently than I can. And it doesn't mean one is better or worse. It's just different. And so again, sure. in the world where everything is like, it has to be the same and faster, faster, faster. We, we are burning ourselves out and not showing up as our best by trying to be like everybody else. We're just saying like, Hey, how do I work best? Like, when is my energy the best? Do I work better in bursts? Do I need to have consistent energy? Like, things that you just aren't even trained to think about. Because like, I love your approach. Like, it's thinking about, like, what are, what's important to you on all these three important areas so that you can show up as your best? Because what I learned 100% is that entrepreneurship business is an inner journey. And it's not so much an outer journey. It's all about the inner journey. And, like, if you don't do the work, like, that's what's going to stop you. It's not going to be... People like shutting down your business. It's, you're going to stop and quit way earlier than somebody else externally is going to stop you, right? Like, like so the inner is going to stop you a lot earlier than you actually could stop. So like, I love the foundation you're building. So that's where, uh, thank you for that. Thank you. Because that, that's what I want my practice to be known for in that way. Because like you said, it's not someone shutting down your business. It's actually mm -hmm. self-doubt that yeah. actually messes with every entrepreneur in that yeah. way, it's self doubt that because we're not connected to what we're doing and not aligning with ourselves, that's going to shut you down and get you to second guess in that yeah. way. I just see so, the sign on the door that says closed due to self doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I well, I don't even know how that would work, but that would be a good way to get people to acknowledge. Yeah. That's where it went wrong. It wasn't yeah. a, the bad decision. It's you didn't believe in yourself, you didn't trust yourself. Like, yeah. Like I worked with a couple pro uh, athletes, Anthony Kim, a couple pro athletes, right? Yeah. And the thing, they were awesome at what they're doing, but when they go awry is because they don't trust themselves that they can do it. Whether it be um, a back issue, like their back starts getting tight so they don't think they can move very well because their body's telling them something yeah. or they're just in their head, I can't do it. It's all the same thing over and over again. And that's why the way you work out and how you work out and to go back to your husband, um, every, like. When you work with anyone, please hear me on this. It needs to be a customized approach to who you are, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. But if you do go into a, a program, for instance, and they have mm -hmm. a mythology, you have to remember that mythology worked for that guru. Mm -hmm. You have to take that guru's methodology and reinforce it to work with you. If you're an auditory person, you have to listen to it more. If you're a kinetic person, you have to do things more with it. If you're um, like, that's the things that you have to make it yours. So every time I see somebody, I have to understand where are they psychologically, where are they physically, where are they emotionally, um, spiritually, and then create, find out their problem, create a methodology and something that's going to get them to attach and align with their body to take action. So many people just try to do things because it's supposed to work and they never align it to who they are. So it can work. Never slow down enough to see it in that way. And that's, that's the biggest issue that you have to think about. 
And mm -hmm. I take it, I take everybody because the first foundation, um, it's a Tony Robbins thing, this, the, how to change your state. You need, right. you need to understand your physical state, you understand your, where your focus is and you understand your language. But I always start with the physical state and say, what's your workout? Mm -hmm. And if your workout, and now going back to optimizing your body, doesn't align with the core reason of the body falling apart, right? Once you have that root issue and you align your workout with that, then your body's always going to get better and stronger. Right now, we live in a world that's designed to have this mastodon body that's all <laughs> front driven, big pecs, big abs, biceps, quads. But yeah. all those things, and this is neurology now, now I'm going to geek out a little bit, buddy. Let's all go. those muscles align with the primitive fight or flight center of your body. So the more and more activity they have, the stronger they have, the more likely you're going to default to a protective state, which is going to default to you crumpling over to protect your internal organs. It's going to tighten you up, change your mindset, and you're going to start looking through a world through negative lenses. But if you start doing more things with the posterior chain of your body and opening your body up, you naturally become more confident. You naturally want to improve open as well as you have more access to your frontal lobe which gives you more social environment, more ability yeah. to talk, have conversations. And the biggest one, the ability to create relationships. And if you know anything about business, it's all about your relationships. Yeah, I, I hear it's important. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's one of those things. So that, that's where it is. And, and like to like throw a, a dime someplace else, a, a, a throw mm -hmm. is how to get comfortable with yourself is I have a, a something I call the shake and shift. Yeah. And it's balancing your mind and body. But the hardest part that people have trouble with, especially as entrepreneurs, is learning to allow it to happen. So you mm -hmm. remember when you were like, oh, when shit hits the fan, I throw that out the wall. So mm -hmm. I created a place that you would actually go to when shit's hitting the fan instead nice. of going off and putting your head down and running and trying to beat at it yeah. or try to think your way out of a physical problem. Cause yeah. that's a, that's a big issue. You think your way out of a physical problem because yeah. your body's like this. We're trying to do all things and we can't do anything because we have these T-Rex arms and we're trying to reach, but we have right. these T-Rex arms because your body wants to contract on itself. Yeah. I created something called the shake and shift, yeah. which you have to learn to allow your body to let go of the deep stress and traumas, mm -hmm. as well as change the belief systems that got you there in the first place. That is the, the process that you do when you get um, lined up. Um, we are in December now, by the way, if you listen to this, I'm actually giving away two more, two more free sessions of a group session of this if you want to try it. And it's Amazing. December, the next two weeks in December. I don't know when that's this perfect. is going to air, but hopefully it will, it will air in time. So that's perfect. So if you're hearing this, like, and you're in early December, like check out the link that I'm going to have in the description to, to Patrick's program. So I'm sure it's going to be amazing. Don't miss out. It's going to be great. Please. Uh, and, and that's the whole thing that I want to bring in is like, mm -hmm. You have to understand a couple of things. If you want to be present, if you want to do more, if you want to start really opening up who you are, you have to learn how to slow down. You have to learn how to stop for a second and realize that it's not hurting you. If yeah. you stop for a second, you can actually reflect back and look back at yourself. And because you're looking back at yourself, you can actually learn from the mistakes that you did in the past. That's actually there to get you there. Yeah. Once you learn from those, then you have the ability to feel yourself, be in your body, which then you could take proper action that now you can press the gas and move even faster to your next level of your future self. Yeah. But you have to have these mechanisms in line, learning how to feel yourself. I have the shake and shift to get you to actually learn how to allow things to happen for you. Yeah. Right. The, the biggest example I give to everyone, <laughs> except for men, this works for women more so. <laughs> um, I'm going to get, this is real mature language I'm about to use. Let's go. Let's do it. Allowance is a, a like an orgasm mm -hmm. you can't force it the more and more you try the more it doesn't happen it eludes you you right. have to learn how to allow it to happen yeah. which then you have to get comfortable and safe with yourself and allow that to happen and yeah. once i get people to recognize that i put it into the everyday world they're like oh wait that's true yeah. how often am i allowing success to ha happen how yeah. often am i allowing myself to relax to be happy Allowing yeah. is everything. And that's what the shake and shift is going to put you in a process that automatically happens because you show up. That's Patrick, the importance I, here. And that's how you manage trust. I love this, Patrick. I love your energy. You know what I would just like challenge our listeners? If they're like, oh, I'm not sure if this is right for me. I just want you to imagine like if you were just could like 
do you if you intuitively just imagine just just slowing down like that that nothing like nothing in the future really has to happen that you are safe right now like like again maybe maybe you imagine you're retired whatever gives you that comfort to imagine that says like hey i don't have to do anything right now nothing's on me no responsibility just like i'm just here right now enjoying it and just if you really imagine like give it a moment like how does that feel like, does that feel right? Or does that feel scary to you? And like, I think that if we truly imagine that we have this inner knowing that that's something that actually does feel really right for us. Right? That, that it, it, yeah, yeah. That, 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 you know, often like, I want to retire. I want to get all this money. I want to do that. I think a lot of times really what we want is the freedom to enjoy the moment, but we're putting it off through this seemingly like we have to earn it goals or we have to have the time. But really, we can cultivate that sense of peace right now by giving ourselves the time to rest, to reflect. That's the same thing. We don't have to earn this sense of peace. We don't have to win it. We don't have to wait for the future for our retirement to get there. We just have to realize that we are worthy of it right now, and it's the right thing for us. And every one of us needs it in our own way. You, What you just did was you got people to reflect, slow down enough to reflect. And if you did it properly and you felt like, oh no, that's not right, and you felt resistance around it, mm. now you have the absolute reason why you're not making success or why you're not happy. And that's all it. driven by childhood development. Yeah. What happened in your past that said you have to keep on going? And it could be your father saying that's not good enough. It could be your mom yeah. saying that's not good enough. Something happened in your past that said you have to keep on moving at a certain speed. Once you go back in time and get yeah. rid of and get clear on that, it yeah. changes things. I saw you had a, a thought, what yeah. was it? Can I be very real for all of our listeners? And if this, you know, if this makes you uncomfortable, like feel free to fast forward. But I, um, I had childhood trauma in my life, right? And it's something where it's like, you know, I thought like, oh, it's not, it's not a big deal. Like, it's not who I am right now. It's not, you know, shaping me up because I obviously, you know, I worked at Meta, I made everything yeah. happen, went to school, got my second master's degree the other day, right? But congrats! But, oh my god, I gotta yeah, stop! Gonna go stop! Stop! <laughs> Congratulations, girl! Like, thank you, thank oh you. Oh my god! Yeah, but but but. Oh, so you slipped that in. <laughs> but my point, yeah, humble brag, humble brag. <laughs> but my point is that what made it difficult was for me to say, like, well, how can I trust the universe and myself when something really bad happened to me when I was a kid? Right, and so it it was a sense like, hey, I want to trust this higher energy. I want to trust this higher intention. Like that to me is really putting me at peace and helping me with this whole like work and this you know honoring honoring you know goodness happening in my life but i had this trouble of being like how can i really trust this universe this all of these things this like intention and peace when something really bad happens like how can i justify that and i had a conversation with my dad which he didn't know about this actually we had a first discussion around this and he was like hey my, I, I love my dad but his point is like that it's an experience that taught you and it made you who you are and I know that can be uncomfortable for some people to hear. I know that people have different things that happen in their life. Ah. And I don't take the chance to like judge that or assess that. But what it says, like, well, he's like, it's not good or bad. Although it's, he's like, well, obviously that was bad. But it made you who you are. And it was an educational experience where I learned something from it. Like that, A, I don't want to put myself in a situation like that. You know, that I'm going to be. And it taught me how to be very independent. It taught me. Um, you know, things that made me very resilient, that made me maybe like a little more secure than I want to be, right? Um, but it's the things that when we look at some things like that maybe happen really bad and we lose our trust and ability to trust others and maybe higher intentions for us. But when you look at it as like, it is an experience that maybe we aren't comfortable with, but if we say like, we did learn from it, in some way we did become better because of it. Um, mm -hmm. And I know everybody's on their journey, that may be uncomfortable for you to hear right now, but for me, it gave me a sense of peace that I could trust something beyond me because it was an experience that, not that I would wish on anybody, but it did make me stronger and more resilient and some positive things came out of it, even if it's educating me of what I want to avoid in life. So if anybody's hearing this and just having to say, like, how can I you know, trust all of this, that something good can happen, that I can trust in slowing down and something higher than me because something bad happened in my life, like this is just something that I've been going through in my own healing and it just felt right for me, so I wanted to share. Well, thank you for sharing. Like that's very powerful and thank you for being vulnerable. Um, of course. A few things that I heard that's absolutely powerful that I, I want to parrot and like, just because something bad happens to you, mm -hmm. you have to remember that made you who you are today yeah. to go through all the things that you've gone through. Yeah. And, not but, and, and it no longer serves you now to get to the next level of yourself. So yeah. you have to be clear and okay with that situation in yeah. order to let it go. So I'm not, um, I'm not a, a psychotherapist. So yeah. 
take me with, with um, a grain of salt, but I Same. do this a lot, often. I don't need to know someone's exact trauma to get someone to let go. I just yeah. need them to, to get a, embody it for a half yeah. a second. And yeah. then because they have it, I can rip it out. So I never go into, oh, so what happened? Yeah. Right? I don't need to know that in order to yeah. clear something. Yeah. But because you brought that up, all you have to do now is like, oh, wait, that thing is making me stronger. It has yeah. made me stronger. And yeah. to be very clear, there is levels to this game. There's yeah. levels to this that a lot of people don't realize. There's minor tree T's yeah. Yeah. and big, huge T's. Yeah. I don't need to know which one because you already envisioned it. You already had it. Yeah. But if you're hearing this, you're like, oh, my God, how can yeah. someone be okay with my major tr big tree, yeah. T? It's like, we don't need to know that. You just need to understand it's making you stronger and better. Yeah. And now you have to let it go by seeing it, feeling it, just yeah. for a half a second and saying, that happened back then. It's no longer serving me. To be the best person I can be, I need to take the things I need to learn from in that yeah. aspect and apply it to where I'm going. Yeah. But you have to let go of all the bad things that happen yeah. with it. Just take the good from it. For yeah. instance, uh, a, a hostage situation. Yeah. You survived. You were here. Yeah. That's what you need to learn from it. And I'm yeah. not, because uh, I don't want to go further into it, but that's the, 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 the light that you have because you're here. You're listening yeah. to this. Yeah. And once and, and you say, I'm here, I can go. Yeah. I think for me, it was also like, did I do like, what, like how could something good, bad happen to a good human? You know, like, not that I'm saying like, oh, I'm this amazing human, but it's a sense of like, injustice. And so to me, it was like, not saying like it was a bad, like, it's not like I was doing something. It was, was punishment. Like we take a bad experience as like potentially punishment or like injustice, where it's just an experience that we learn from and to your point, like, then they can say, like, hey, how did I change? And what did I learn about myself and who I want to be because of this? So, um, Thank you for sharing that. I know we're going a little over, Patrick. Any final oh, thing wow. you want to wrap up? I know, I know it went by fast. We were going a lot over, uh, but I want to honor, just kind of a wrap up. Any final things you want to share for our listeners? And then we'll wrap up with three rapid fire questions. So one of the things I, I tell everybody, and this is the, the really big, humongous thing that I want everyone to hear. Unless you're clear about your past, and this is what I call about how to make anyone move mm -hmm. faster. Once you get clear about your past, you, can't, you can be certain about your future, your present. So as soon as you understand your past, get certain with that, you understand who you are now. Once you understand who you are now, you can envision and see yourself better in the future. Once you see yourself in the future, you get the exact action steps that you need to take now. So it's the infinity loop of time that I talk about. I want you now to learn how to slow down. Get back into your body and be able to reflect inside yourself. And whatever mythology method that you use, whether it's walking meditation or seated meditation to get quiet, do it. But now once you get into the habit of doing it, the thing that I see issue all the time is you phone it in or you no longer look within, you just do the action step. And it's very similar to how often do you drive home and you forget how you got home. Right. Like, oh, that was fast. And that's because your brain, your brain has something called a, a habit loop sensor. It's automatic. It puts it, it hot wires everything. So you no longer, I call it eco mode. You no mm -hmm. longer are present on the way home. Once you get into a habit of doing this, and I'm saying this because all the people that probably listen to this are probably done their, their due diligence. Mm -hmm. They've done the work. But I want you to look and say, am I phoning it in or I'm really still feeling what's happening? Because there's a 90% chance that you're phoning it in and not even recognize it because you're doing the work. But mm -hmm. it's not really doing the work. That's the last thing I would love to say to people is look at your past. It dictates your future. Your future will give you the action steps that you need to do now so you can become, make more money, do whatever the niche you need to do. Yeah. I love that, Patrick. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, well, Patrick, we wrap up here with three rapid fire questions. So whenever you're ready, let me know. I am ready! <laughs> Okay. Um, what is your favorite daily habit that you would recommend to others? Ooh, my favorite daily habit. Let me see. I have a couple that I do all the time. I would say um, I have an AM and a PM routine. Mm -hmm. and a I'm going to go with my AM routine okay. because it changes dramatically based off of how I wake up. Mm -hmm. So my best daily habit is my AM routine. The fact that I block it off and it's there no matter what, where I can either sit down here and write. 
or I can go inside my gym and work out. My wife has come down so many times and I'm in a bathrobe and my PJs and I'm doing like certain movements. She's like, how can you work out in your PJs? It's because it's not the typical workout. I'm just getting my body activated for what I've learned inside my body, which makes me stronger and highly energetic all the time. Mm -hmm. So my favorite back activity, my daily habit is my AM, AM routine. I love that. Got to have it. Second question for that. What is a favorite exercise you would recommend for others for opening up? You were mentioning that's what we want to focus on. Oh, wow. I have a whole bunch. If you want a whole daily act, a morning routine that would mm -hmm. sync up with what I'm about to show you, mm -hmm. um, just email me, text message me, or go to my website and have a chat bot and it goes right cool. to me. Um, okay. And I'll give you that. I'll give you an exact protocol. But the best thing that anyone can actually do is... Mm -hmm feel their body and right. get their body to actually move. And the best one that I, that I want to show you is if you, if someone would stand up, I want you to now stand up, bring all your air out. And I want you to kick the back heel, but I want your foot to move your knee to move past the opposite knee. Like, so, uh -huh. so it's bringing your knee all the way back. I want can you see me? Yeah. You bring yeah, your knee you, all yeah. the way back. Yeah. And you see how there's a space between my knee. Yeah. Your body stays straight and here. And all you have to do, is touch just like okay. so keeping your body straight and what that's going to do is start to open up a lot of channels inside your body that's called okay. a reverse cross crawl that yes. is one exercise that one if you do it right get this to tighten up you're going to feel all your hip flexors open your shoulders open as well as your feet start to balance out which is those are the three areas that every human body needs to activate and, and work out and if you're listening on audio check out the youtube video to see a little more detail but it looks like if you're doing like a a uh, butt kick, but then you're actually touching the inners of your feet as you're doing the butt kick with one hand at a with time. With your opposite then, hand. If you're opposite so you take hand, your opposite yeah. hand, opposite foot, go as far back as you possibly can with your core staying straight. So you shouldn't feel any back tension whatsoever. Your core stays straight. Kick your leg back and feel it. You're going to feel your hamstrings turn on and your quad Love stretch. It. You're going to feel your lat turn on and your, op your chest open. And that's, that's an indicator so cool. that you have it right. I have never seen that before, so thank you. Okay, last but not least, in the positive context, going off track is? In the positive contract, going off the track is? Going off the track is finding your happy place that people don't think is the right way. Mm. It's never been done before. You're being creative and being who you truly are that's outside the box. I believe mm. that's what off the track is. And that, since you, like, even your story alone, you found your happy place that was off the beaten trail. You did it your own way. So you're off the track, mama. Go ahead. Thanks, my friend. I love being here. Patrick, I love this time with you and to all of our listeners. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. I hope you love Patrick's energy. I hope um, you learned something. Feel free to comment and share with us what stood out to you. What do you want to take at, What do you want to take action on from all of these learnings and any questions you might have for Patrick, please share them as well. And also check out the details for how to work with Patrick, his resources, again, the promo that's coming up here. And if you loved his energy, like, like I did, I hope you get inspired and find a way to build more of that into your own life so again thank you so much for coming off track with us and let's take over the world together right off track thank Patrick, you, thank Bye, you. take care